to the Redline Productions proudly presents Today's To The Redline review was made possible in part by Hey YouTube Today I'd like to go over this 2012 Dodge Durango Now the Durango has been around for quite a bit of time quite a bit some time it actually went out of production for a couple of years back in 2009 but uh, Dodge just reintroduced it back in 2011 uh, this one's a 2012 model they've pretty much just updated it uh, updated the V8 model with a six-speed automatic that's one of the changes this one is an RT it's a pretty high trim it's got the 5.7 liter Hemi and it's got those really insane 22 inch aftermarket uh, rims on it which do protrude out of the fenders a little bit. The, the, the Durango, what it is, it, it's pretty much based on the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee now, which is essentially based on the Mercedes ML class. So it's a really nice SUV. They've converted it from a truck-based SUV, like what Ford's done with the Explorer, over to a car-based SUV. Now this one's also a white, the whatever white pearl exterior color. This one's an all-wheel drive model. And you can see the other modifications is the windows in the front are pretty dark tinted. I mean, it looks pretty, it looks pretty cool interesting with these black finished wheels especially on 22s i mean this was a pretty expensive vehicle when it was new i mean these things compete directly with the explorer because they do seat seven i um, mean the way it drives though is completely different from the old one and the interior has been greatly improved i mean i'm a big fan of the jeep the current generation jeep grand cherokee so i'm not surprised that i actually like the durango and how it drives but uh, this does have chrysler's new smart key access system to lock the doors push that button it'll lock it uh, to unlock the doors just approach the door touch it right there and it unlocks the door for you because the key is in my pocket uh, this one is an RT model you can see from the badging and the red stitching really nice black leather upholstery with perforated inserts getting into the car you do have push button start so put your foot on the brake and push the start button very nice sounding 5.7 uh, Hemi V8. That's pretty much one of the biggest differences between this car and the Explorer, is this one does have the Hemi. It has a V8 engine for those of you who actually want to have a V8. Uh, windows are automatic up, down for the driver and the front passenger. It's very nice. The gauges, uh, they look like they came right out of the current generation town and country, or caravan, I'm sorry. They're, they're pretty clear, easy to read. I like those gauges much better, much better than the gauges that Chrysler puts in the Avenger. I mean, this interior is just much better than what I've seen in the uh, current generation Avenger. Uh, but the interior, soft touch, really high quality graining, love the chrome around the, around the vents and on the door handles. It adds a touch of class without looking too tacky. Uh, the door panels are soft touch right here. Even soft touch there. This is nice and padded where your elbows are gonna rest. You have memory seating in this one. The steering wheel is nice and fat. Feels good in your hands. Buttons, uh, buttons everywhere. This one looks like it has radar guided cruise control. And it also has steering wheel controls for the audio system on the back, which I don't, I'm not a particular fan of just cause they're not labeled. You have to kind of guess or get used to it. This one does have a backup camera and it does have Chrysler's new six speed automatic transmission uh, paired with the Hemi. The V6 still uses the five speed auto. They haven't upgraded it yet to the eight speed auto that the charger just got. The glove box is actually lined with felt and, and it's damped. So that's really nice. It is on the small side though. Uh, the center console here, it's nicely lined with felt. It is two level. You have your uh, power, power port in there and your US, USB and auxiliary. So it is all-wheel drive, and it does give you a low-range transfer case, which the Explorer doesn't give you. But as you can see, all soft touch here. You got a nice, big, uh, pretty decent-sized moonroof as well, and you do have a power tailgate on this vehicle, activated by that button right there. Coming to the back seat, the materials do follow through. It's soft touch right here. Nice chrome on the door handles. Soft touch where your elbows are going to go. Uh, the back seat's pretty uh, nicely spacious, and the seats actually do recline. They're actually controlled by this lever right here. You can adjust the recline of them. Getting in, it's a pretty decent step in height. You have your vents back here and the seats are heated back here as well. Very nice and power port. Uh, climate controls for the rear passengers. Nice armrest right here. Very comfortable, very nice back seat. To get to the third row in this vehicle, you will pull this lever here, which is kind of difficult to do with one hand. 
and that pretty much folds down. Pull, pull the strap right here, and then it'll lift up to uh, let you have access to the third row, which is definitely on the small side. Uh, I mean, these kind of these mid-size crossover SUVs are meant for kids, but I am nice pleased to see that it is soft touch right here in the back, but it, everything else is hard plastic. There's a little speaker right here. Um, but it's uh, it's not too, too bad. I mean, the seat cushion definitely is a little bit low. So if you're looking for a little more space, the Traverse offers you a little more space than this, and a Pilot seems a little more spacious than this as well. I'm not a big fan of the folding mechanism for the second row. The Explorer has a much easier folding mechanism than this, that's for sure. This one does have a power tailgate, so you can see it's opening for you. Um, cargo area back here is pretty small when the third row seat is up, but fold that seat down, it'll give you much more space. I like how they've aligned this with aluminum, so that's a very nice classy touch that they've done. And to close the tailgate, just push that button and it'll close for you. See, this one does have Chrysler's 5.7 liter Hemi V8, and it makes 360 horsepower. Very nice looking engine, uh, very fast, and a lot of torque. But I'm just, I don't really have any complaints with it other than it is rated at 13 in the city and 20 on the highway. So uh, it does have the little cylinder de deactivation. But what this car kind of competes with it will be the Explorer Sport, which is, ra is supposed to get a little bit better gas mileage with five more horsepower. So you guys be the choice if you want a V8 or you want a twin turbo V6. I like how it has struts as well. It's just nicely finished. All right, now for the, guy, for the part that you guys have been waiting for. How does the 2012 Durango drive? Especially with the new six-speed automatic. Last year's 2011 model had a five-speed auto. A lot of people have given the five-speed auto a lot of grief just because it uh, is a little bit behind the times and Chrysler's tuned it to be too much for gas mods. So the gearing is really big, or is really tall, I'm sorry. So let's see if the six-speed automatic makes a difference. Uh, anyways, Gives you a really nice view of the road. The seats are really comfortable, and I like the steering wheel in this car a lot. And that Hemi engine, the Hemi V8, definitely makes a very nice noise when you push it. The 22-inch wheels, on the other hand, definitely uh, you feel the the difference they make. With the this car has this with the stock uh, eight. I think these comes with 20s. Probably would recommend that. But some people just like the look of the 22s. It's really up to your taste. SUV, that's for sure, and that V8 sounds really good. It makes a really nice, deep rumble. <laughs> I just feel like it's a little too much. I mean, this is supposed to be a family hauler kind of crossover, but uh, Dodge definitely keeps their manliness with that 5.7 V8. <laughs> uh, in terms of handling, this thing, it feels so much different than the old Durango. I mean, the old Durango was such a, a brute, like a gruff, grumpy old brute with its with its crude truck-like suspension. This one's definitely smoother. Even with those 22s, the ride is not bad. I'm shocked how uh, decent the ride is. I mean, under normal acceleration, I'm definitely noticing that extra gear. The uh, it has an extra it has that extra gear now to where the the transmission is not it's not feeling like it's bogging the engine down like the five-speed auto did. I mean, I drove the five-speed auto last year and it definitely noticed that the gearing was all wrong for the engine, but this is much, much better. I'm very curious to see how the eight-speed auto drives with the V6. I mean, it's just got power everywhere. It's a good, uh, good powertrain. I can see exactly why people like to brag about their little Hemis. Very nice. Very pleased. I mean, very impressive. What Dodge has completely done with this overhaul Durango is just completely changed it. This thing is nothing like the old one. Absolutely nothing like the old one. Even with those 22-inch wheels on it, I'm very surprised that uh, the ride quality is not affected that much. 
It's a very quiet, refined SUV. Anyways, okay, so we'll show you guys one more quick acceleration run and then uh, we'll call it a day. The car's already beeping at me because it's low on fuel. Six speed automatic definitely makes a big difference. So if you guys are in the market for a full size uh, crossover SUV, or mid size one, take a look at the Durango. I mean, there's lots of choices out there, so definitely take take all of them for a test drive and uh, make the decision on your own based on your price and your preferences. But thanks for watching, guys, okay? Have a great day. Yeah, here's some legal stuff for you. The views and opinions expressed in the following video may not necessarily reflect those of the title holding automotive dealer or the entity they represent. All videos are filmed with permission by a professional driver on a set course with the collaboration and assistance of local law enforcement authorities. Do not attempt. Logos and brandings of vehicle manufacturers, dealerships, and online social media sites are the sole property of their respective representation used with permission. The To The Red Line logo, soundtrack, and web resources, as well as all other associated media are copyrighted intellectual property of To The Red Line, LLC. All rights reserved.